Hello, everyone, and welcome to Beverly Neighborhood News. I'm Matt Falletra. We're now into our third week of negotiations between the Beverly Teachers Union and the school district over key issues, including wage increases, paid parental and family medical leave, and a pathway for paraprofessionals to transition into teaching roles. Despite ongoing discussions, both parties have yet to reach a mutual agreement. Bargaining sessions continue as stakeholders work toward a resolution. Mark your calendars. Beverly's annual holiday parade is set to dazzle the community on Sunday, December 1st. Festivities will kick off at 1 p.m. starting from Beverly High School. And for those who can't attend in person, BevCam has got you covered. You can catch all the action live on our official YouTube channel, Channel 8, or in high definition on Channel 1073. You don't want to miss it. Every holiday season, communities rally to spread joy, and police departments across the country often lead the way with toy drives. These initiatives aim to provide gifts to children who might otherwise go without, bringing warmth and hope to families during a season of giving. The Beverly Police Department is holding the 28th annual Sean R. Connolly Memorial Toy Drive. The BPD invites you to help spread holiday cheer by donating new, unwrapped toys for children in need. Collection will be on Sunday, December 15th, between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. at the North Beverly Plaza on 55 Dodge Street. Hate is loud, but love. Love is the majority. Coming up next, we'll have Amy Henderson and Lisa Wilworth from the Beverly Waste Reduction Committee in studio. But first, here's John McMahon with the weather. Thank you, Matt. Wildfires continue to burn throughout all of Massachusetts. As firefighters continue to battle these fires, officials remind everyone that burning yard waste is prohibited statewide through January and in many areas year-round. During open burning season, a permit is required and burning leaves is not allowed. Avoid outdoor cooking or heating with fire pits, grills, or chimeneas, as sparks can ignite dry vegetation. Use caution with power equipment, as hot engines and spilled fuel can start fires. Dispose of fireplace ashes in a metal can with water and a tight lid. Never dump them outside or in the trash. Always extinguish smoking materials safely in water or sand, and avoid discarding them in dry areas. You know, it's crazy, Matt. Currently, as we speak, there are over 400 active wildfires, every one of them started by a person. You know, that, that's crazy, John. Just as a reminder, if you're caught starting any forest fire, you could be subject up to a $500 fine, imprisonment for not more than one month. But in addition, you can be responsible for the cost of the fire suppression, which can roughly be $1,000 per acre. For example, the Lynn Woods fire has burned at least 125 acres. That's $125,000 minimum. Let's be smart out there. We'll be back with John in a moment, but first, here's a message from an old friend. Be right there. Wait. Use the shovel and bucket of water, remember? Drown, stir, drown, feel. Then make sure it's cool. Where'd you learn that? SmokeyBear.com. Brushed up on some tips before we left. Don't want to start a wildfire, right? <laughs> Only you can prevent wildfires. One day these rats were playing in the woods. One of some matches and that smoke gun. Listen to smoke before you give it a try. Only you. Don't play with matches. Don't play with fire. And prevent wildfires. All right. Thank you, Smokey Bear. That's some good information there. You know, little mispronunciation I find happening all the time. People say Smokey the Bear. It's actually Smokey Bear. Bear is his last name. It's not Smokey the Bear like Smokey the Bandit. But feel free to call me John the Mac Man. That's what my friends do. All right, moving into the Beverly Five Day Forecast. 
Uh, if you'll see today, we're going to get a little bit of rain, high of 52. Moving into tomorrow, rain will continue, high of 45. Uh, moving into Sunday, the rain should slow down, still partly cloudy, and then we should get a little sunshine on Monday, high of 50. Tuesday, high of 51 with uh, a few showers. You know, just because we're starting to get a little more rain here in the next coming days does not mean the drought is over. Most of Massachusetts is still in a level three critical drought, one step away from an emergency drought. So please, please continue to conserve water as much as you can. For tips on how to conserve water, visit mass.gov. And if it's yellow, you might want to consider letting it mellow. We'll be back after these messages. When we have the food we need, we are at our best. We push further. We rise higher. We unlock our full potential. When we have the food we need, we make our communities stronger. Together, we can help everyone get the food they need to thrive. Join the movement to end hunger at feedingamerica.org slash act now. Welcome back to Beverly Neighborhood News. We have with us today Amy Henderson and Lisa Woolworth from the City of Beverly Waste Reduction Committee. And we're really excited to have a conversation with you guys regarding um, recycling and, and I know that I don't do as much as I should and I want to learn more about it. So maybe you guys could tell us a little bit about what the committee is and, and really how you got involved in it. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having us. <laughs> we're, we're, we're really excited to get our message out today on BevCam. This is a great opportunity for us. And um, the Waste Reduction Committee is a uh, mayor-appointed, city council-approved committee. And our mission is to... Uh, educate and advocate for waste reduction in the city of Beverly. And that nice. includes, you know, from City Hall all the way through, you know, any resident. Our, um, and just to support the mission of recognizing that, uh, that there are renewable resources that don't need to go into the trash can and that we can take things out of our waste stream and put them into, divert them from the waste and put them into um, composting, uh, recycling, or, or other reusable ways of, of diverting waste. Nice. Uh, and and how, how do you, how, I, I know the city contracts with a company that collects all the recycling. Um, and is that, is that a new company? Because yeah, I've just Republic started seeing has, the trucks. Republic has been with us for a year and a half now. Okay. It That's used to right, be yes. JRM. Okay. And now uh, Republic is our trash hauler. And what kind of, what are some of the programs or initiatives uh, that you guys are trying to push out to the, the residents of Beverly? Things that they can do? Uh, because I, I, to be honest, like I said, I, I, I get confused sometimes as to what goes where. Absolutely. Everybody does. And, and I I think the important thing is to meet people where they are, and that's something that Green Beverly, the, the local uh, 501c3, does as well. They meet people where they are, and it, we are so grateful for people who try to recycle. We are so grateful for people who want to learn about composting, and we are happy to support you in your journey. Um, some of our, our programs are um, we do zero-waste events, so, for example, we work with the Homecoming Committee at Lobster Fest. That's uh, probably the biggest event we do. Mm -hmm. And um, for Lobster Fest, they usually have about 2,000 people there. And we work with the food vendors. We work uh, with the uh, other local vendors that come out on that day. And we try to make the event as zero waste as possible. And so the food vendor uses certified compostable serviceware, and we take all the food scraps, lobster shells, it gets a little bit gross, <laughs> but with all the lobster well, juices. Well, I think folks in Beverly are used to lobster shells. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, all the compostable plates, and we divert that from the waste stream into composting. We have our um, local company in Manchester, Black Earth Compost, comes and picks up all of the compostable food scraps. We divert um, recycling, we divert 
plastic wrap. We divert returnable cans, cardboard, and at the end of the day, with a 2,000 person event, we end up with one garbage bag of trash. That's it. Everything else really? is diverted from the waste. And, um, That's incredible. And it's, it's a really fun event. It's great to see the community out. And it's, we have a great team of volunteers. And uh, it, it feels really good to know that you can put on a big event and not generate a lot of waste. We um, also do it on a smaller scale for Green Beverly's Pumpkin Smash. Okay. Um, but that's a slightly smaller scale. And just I would imagine a lot more composting with the pumpkins. Well, the composting <laughs> is actually, um, in that case, uh, composted right on site at New Entry Farm, which is great. But we take whatever scraps we get and we send um, other food scraps, not pumpkin scraps, but to Black Earth. Now, how can folks compost at home easily? Now, I, that easily, but how? What, what are some of the ways that people do it? Is it... Um, well, some people compost in their backyards, just mm -hmm. take their um, scraps of food, not usually not fats and meats, but you can put that in your backyard. And if you look on the Green Beverly website, there's a lot of information on how to do that. But the easiest way, in my opinion, is to um, get a contract with Black Earth Compost and have them come to your house. They come every week and pick up your recycling bin, I mean your compost bin, and we look for, we use Lobster Fest and the Pumpkin Smash as both opportunities to educate people on what is compostable. Because some people think, ooh, you know, well, how do I do it? It's going to be hard. But it's really very easy. You can put all of your food scraps, um, chicken bones, lobster shells, you know. Any, any kind of peels from vegetables, uh, yeah, any, any of that, that excess. And you just put it, some people keep it in the refrigerator, but I keep it on my countertop and it doesn't smell. Um, and then you put it out every week for Black Earth to come and get, and it, it's very easy. And mm -hmm. if you do that, you get $5 a quarter off of your trash fee. So Black Earth charges $99 a, yeah, a year, that. about, and then you'll get $20 off of your trash fee if you, um, you know, hire Black Earth to, mm -hmm. to get your compost. And you'll find that your trash is reduced by 25 to 40%. It's amazing. I just converted my sister-in-law, and she's like, I can't believe how much less trash I have now. It's amazing. Now, do you compost at home? Oh, yes. You do. Do you compost? Um, I, I use Black Earth compost. Okay, so that's great. This uh, is a yeah. nice mix. Uh, and, then, um, <clears throat> and then for yard waste, I either put it out on the curb yeah. um, for the days that the city of Beverly has it picked up, mm -hmm. or I take it directly to Stanley Street. Right, yep. Stanley Street has yard the, waste. Uh, the yes. yard waste yep. bin mm -hmm. that's open most days, or I, I believe that the it's hours are posted. It is, but yeah, it's on the website. Yeah, hours are posted. I know they're open on the weekends, yep. especially. Yep. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I've dumped many, many bags of leaves there. Yes, yes. Um, it's, a, it's a great resource for the city, but there is also another way to, um, to divert your food waste from your waste stream, and that is to sign up for the city's free compost drop site for food scraps. So if you go on the city website and look for the free composting site, mm -hmm. the, um, you take a little quiz because we want to make sure that people know what to put into the right. bins and that they're not putting plastic and that they're peeling vegetable stickers and fruit stickers off because unfortunately those aren't compostable. Right. Um, and if you end up with a final product and it hasn't been, you will find little <laughs> stickers in your, in your compost. Um, but there are a couple of free, free sites around the city. And once you take the quiz, you get the code for the lock, and then you're good to go. And it's free. And you're dropping off your, the food scraps and all that, and then the composting is happening there. It's, it's picked up twice a week, I think, I think so. by, by Black Earth. Oh, by Black Earth. So okay. the city contracts with Black Earth for and what those are they sites. doing with it? So they have a brand-new facility in Manchester. It's state-of-the-art. And they bring it to the facility. They dump it, and it gets... Um, it's in an enclosed space, yeah. and it gets moved over the course of six weeks through their facility, and they have state-of-the-art venting that goes in so it doesn't smell at all, which yeah. is great. Um, <laughs> and so yeah, if you're outside the building, you don't know that composting is going on there. And then it gets taken outside, and it uh, finishes processing over the course of another four and a half months or so. And then they bag it, and and they sell it. Um, if you sign up for their service, you will get a free bag every year. But uh, oh wow, it's fabulous stuff. Yeah, it's. Really and now, uh, how do you do it in your yard? 
Oh, I think Amy knows more about that. Right? Oh, 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 the, <laughs> yes. <laughs> backyard <laughs> so the backyard composting, um, it's, it's frankly been a while since I've done it, but um, you want to, uh, you know, set up a bin that will be easy to aerate. Mm -hmm. And when you add food scraps to it, and food scraps are considered green or sort of carbon-rich material, right. you want to be sure to be adding uh, for every sort of one part green, three parts nitrogen or brown, so like leaves or sticks or hay or, you know, dried stuff. And you mix it all together and you keep aerating it and you make sure it's moist like a damp, wrung out sponge. Mm -hmm. uh, and it will eventually break down into compost. And you can use it in your yard. You, yeah. I'm not going to lie, I like the drop off thing better. It's easier. <laughs> it is a lot easier. <laughs> Okay, let, talking, bringing it back inside the house. What what are what do a lot of, a lot of people making mistakes with when they do the recycling? Do you do you know like what 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 are people doing wrong? Uh, well, Not to scold them. But no, to, but no, to no. Teach. Well, <laughs> well, first, actually, I'd like to establish that Beverly has a very low incidence of contamination in their curbside recycling. We did an audit back in January, and I want to say our contamination rate was super low, like below, below ten percent for sure. I think it was around six percent. So Beverly is actually doing an excellent job with their recycling. Great job, Beverly. Yeah. All right. um, Go us. But some common things that will often end up in recycling that shouldn't. Um, black plastic, unfortunately, is not recyclable. Mm. It's um, uh, when material is processed through, it's called a material recovery facility, and it's a series of conveyor belts, and uh, the black plastic's not visible to the electronic eye mm. that instructs where which, things where to go. to go. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so that, unfortunately, is not recyclable. Um, plastic bags are not recyclable. Really? Um, they are considered tanglers. They get caught up in the spokes of... But you can recycle those at, you know, Market Basket or, or stores that collect the film plastic. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. And a lot of stores now are going to paper... A lot yes, of cities have yes. mandated. They have to be paper. They have yes, to be paper. Yes. Um, yes. But Which is obviously much easier to recycle. Yes, absolutely. Um, what else? Oh, other things are like uh, cardboard milk containers, mm -hmm. and cream containers. Those are not recyclable. And like things that chicken broth comes in. Yeah. The fo foil lined containers. Um, what are some of the other ones? Those are the big ones. I would say yeah, people are, don't know about the. The milk containers because they think it's cardboard, but it's not recyclable in this part of Massachusetts. I learned that uh, last week when I tried to put the um, uh, container of almond milk into the recycle yeah. bin, and my wife yelled at me. She didn't yell loud. Good for her. But, but she, she, <laughs> well, she knows what she's doing. It was a, it was a teachable moment. Yes. And um, there is a recyclopedia on the Recycle Smart MA website that you can go to if you ever have a question about any material or where it can be recycled. So now, what, what are you? What are the long-term goals of this program? Um, are there? Are there? Are we going to try to get to net zero percent? I mean, is that? That's clearly the ultimate goal. But what's the? What's the realistic like goal to get to? So, when people say zero waste, it almost sets up a, a, an unachievable it, yeah. goal because. We can get close to zero waste, but we're never quite at zero waste. There are always going to be things that aren't quite, uh, materials that aren't quite recoverable in our society, or they're too expensive to, to um, divert from the waste stream. Hmm. Uh, the Mass DEP in 2018 or so uh, set up a goal of reducing Massachusetts waste by 30% from 2018 levels by the year 2030, and by 90% by the year 2050. Okay. So um, Beverly's down already a little bit from our 2018 levels. So again, yay, Beverly. Yes. Um, but we have a ways to go. And um, one of the really low-hanging fruits is to teach people how to do uh, how to compost food scraps at home. Yeah. Because uh, there are estimates, I think Lisa said earlier, it's 25 to 40% of your, of your waste stream if you don't divert your food scraps 
are made up of food scraps. And and now, uh, the the way the city is now, you can only put uh, so much trash, non-recyclable trash out. It's it's a, it's lowered than it used to be. You have to have smaller containers you can, and less bags of trash. So I think they're really kind of trying to push people into the into the recycling thing because that trash. Then let's talk about landfills because the stuff that's not recycled, it's got to go somewhere. Where's it going? Right. My my that thought is, is like, landfills. So the DEP is predicting by 2030 that mass landfills will be at capacity. So right now they're already shipping material out to the Midwest and the South, and it's costing, that's why, you know, it's costing so much more to get rid of our trash. Um, so we're hoping to, you know, help with that. We, people are going to have to just reduce their trash. Mm -hmm. I mean, by, the landfills are, are maxed out. Um, wow. so, so right now, a lot of our trash goes, also goes to waste to energy facilities. So, but they're not ideal because so our trash goes to these facilities, these giant Some incinerators. Sort of emissions must come out of that. Uh, yes, yes. Um, many of the newer generation ones have very low emissions by the EPA standards. Uh, there is one um, which has been grandfathered in and hopefully will close soon. <laughs> but um, yes, it's, it, it's not ideal. And, and the result is a toxic ash, right? Right. Which also has and to go somewhere, and, and, um, but does take up less volume mm -hmm. than, you know, a trash bag or, you know, what the contents that come out of the trash, uh, the trash truck. And then how, how does that, um, the result of, of incinerating that, are they able to take in, are they able to convert any of that? My, I, I seem to remember a plant that used to burn trash and turn it into steam, which can help turn into electricity. Is that, is that what they're that's, doing? That's the waste to energy. Yes. Oh, so that, that, that's a somewhat ideal, if they're, if they're doing it properly, obviously. It, it's, right. It's not ideal. I no. mean, ideally, we would be able to divert 90% of what we don't want from the waste stream, and maybe that 10%, this is the last option, then goes to the waste to energy facility. And yes, it does generate steam, mm -hmm. which generates electricity, which powers, um, you know, sixteen to thirty thousand homes per year, which is which is great. It's significant. It is. It's great. not nothing. It's great, but again, let's try and divert everything from the waste stream first. Yeah, one of the other things I was thinking about is the difference between shopping, uh, buying local versus buying online and having the the, the items shipped in the cardboard boxes and all that. Well, do you find it significant that people should try to shop local more, or it doesn't matter? We would love to see people shop local more, because every time an Amazon or whatever truck delivery service comes to your house and, you know, they're using gas, they're having emissions, and um, then you have to dispose of the cardboard and the styrofoam that comes with all of that. Mm. And then if you don't want it, then you have to deal with sending it back or you know it's just one of our things I and mean, the DEP and mass DEP um, has a hierarchy of, of waste and one of the first things is just reduce like reduce what you buy mm. like before you bring something into your home before you purchase anything think about you know do I really need this <laughs> how long is it going to last when I'm done with it what do I do with it you know, is it going to be something I can recycle or is it just going to contribute more to these landfills? So we just encourage people to be more thoughtful about purchases in general throughout, you know, across the spectrum of their lives. Food, um, you know, material things for their homes and everything. Uh, other thing is there are studies that have shown that if you shop local, the money stays local well, and supports the local the economy. economy. Yeah. Uh, so, um, from I'm an not, economic perspective, it right. always makes sense to yeah. try to shop local uh, space, ab absolutely. as best you can. Absolutely. You're supporting your neighbors who own local businesses, and that's really important. Sometimes the unfortunate thing, like, for example, with, with COVID, people got too... Yep. It was too easy to just absolutely hit the, hit the button on the phone and the stuff shows up at the house right but uh, even then for folks that are doing that they could still properly recycle all of those materials that they get 
Yes. The cardboard and... The cardboard. The styrofoam is a little bit trickier. We do have styrofoam collections twice a year because styrofoam cannot go into curbside recycling. Right. Uh, so the next styrofoam collection is January 11th, okay. um, Saturday, right here at the high school. Oh. Yeah. So... And... Um, so, styrofoam's a no. <laughs> that's that, that's well, good. Well, please save if, it and bring it to the collection <clears throat> in right. January. If, if folks want to get involved, if folks want to join your, uh, if not join the committee, but just be involved in the programs that you're working on, who, where should they go? What What's the best avenue to connect up with you folks? Um, well, there are a couple different ways. We are on Instagram. They can uh, DM us on Instagram and I didn't come up with a name, but it's Beverly Waste Reduction Com, C-O-M-M. -M. Okay. Uh, we're also on Facebook, Beverly Recycles. Okay. And then they can also email us. Um, our, the email for the committee is beverly.wrc, for Waste Reduction Committee, mm -hmm. at Gmail. And I promise that's on the screen right now. <laughs> I'm well, magic, like magic. We want to hear from happens. people. I mean, if people have questions, if people have yeah. concerns, we want to hear from people because... You know, we're here to serve the, uh, the community, and, um, and we want, as I said earlier, to meet people where they are and help them on their journey to generating less waste. Absolutely. Well, I, I actually learned quite a bit here today, and I want to thank you guys for coming in and taking the time. Oh, yeah. And I hope that maybe there's something we can do down in the future and cover your, uh, some of your events, especially the lobster event. Why not? Well, would we would love that. <laughs> so Amy and Lisa, thank you so much. The Waste Reduction Committee for the City of Beverly. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, really appreciate it. Thank you. I know you've been grinding. I know things aren't easy. I wonder if you know that we can get help. Love your mind. For John McMahon, I'm Matt Fletcher. Thank you for watching Beverly Neighborhood News.